Okay, welcome to today's session. My name is Brian Casson, and today we're going to be covering segmenting and filtering with Google Analytics data and we're actually going to cover a little bit of AdWords segmentation as well. Uh, this is something that I personally use on a very regular basis in the account. Uh, so once you know how to sort and segment information, it just makes your life a lot easier when it comes to managing your ads and uh, trying to find that data in Google Analytics. Uh, so we're going to switch over and I'm going to show you how to, uh, we're going to actually start in Analytics first. So in Google Analytics, uh, any section that you're in, uh, except for real time, can actually be segmented. So if, for example, I am in the acquisition section of the site and I go through to all traffic channels, within the site itself, you're going to see that there's segmenting options up at the top where it says add segment segmentation. Uh, let me just go to all view here. And there's secondary dimension filtering or segmenting also available in the account. So I'm going to start off with the most used one. Uh, generally speaking, if I can't do a secondary uh, dimension the first time, that's when I'll actually add a segment. So as an example, if I'm in the organic search section of the site and I want to figure out uh, what time of day these organic searches took place, I can apply a secondary dimension and I can segment by, you can see there's a, a drop down. I can segment by device as a secondary, source, medium, medium and source, the campaign names themselves, the landing pages, uh, a specific page. And as I keep going down, you can see there's more traffic sources more advertising account information. You can sort by destination URL. So these become in handy quite a lot. You can even do exit pages and so on and so on. Search destination page. Some of them will work. Uh, actually, a good majority of them will work uh, and some of them not so much. Uh, the reason that uh, some of them don't work is because they're just not compatible with this particular view that you're in. So if you want to do the hour or segmenting by day, you can see all the way down at the bottom where it says time. We can choose hour of the day. And then this not provided data will show you what hour that came in. Now you can see that the hour of day one can be quite confusing because it's got a very long number. It's got the, the hour as well as the date attached to it if you're looking over a longer period of time. So I prefer to use the hour itself because here you can see 12 o'clock, you can get pretty good data of what's coming in at 12 o'clock, what's coming in at 10 o'clock. Much easier to read than the specific hour of each of those days. And you can see all the data uh, coming through there. So here we can see that the best, uh, if I want to sort by goals, in other words, actual inquiries, we can see nine o'clock in the morning is generally the best time for an inquiry uh, in here. And uh, if you're wondering in your Google ads what Google's gonna learn around, there's a good possibility it's going to learn around this nine o'clock uh, to try get you some more leads because there's definitely uh, a winner here compared to the other ones. Now, if there's a whole bunch of ones or inquiries that are all around the same time, Google technically won't learn too much around that. Uh, just to give you some examples of some other things that you can do. So you can do hour of the day. You can also do the day of the week. So we want to see whether or not it's a Monday, Tuesday. Again, here you can see it uses numbers, which is not ideal. So we're going to go to day of week name. And that's a little bit easier to identify now. We can see that the Tuesday, technically speaking, organically gets you the most inquiries. So secondary dimensions can actually be achieved from almost anywhere in the account. So if I want to go to, as an example, uh, my devices section. Okay. And you can see the mobile devices that are doing certain things on the site. I can now go into a secondary dimension and I can take a look at some acquisition, source and medium. 
And you can see that the most common one is an, actually an iPhone, which comes in organically. Apple iPhone organically. And then Apple iPhone direct. If I want to sort by completions, the Huawei and the Samsung generally did some completions on this particular goal here. And you can see, you'll see uh, in the data, there's a lot of not set. That's just when it can't detect what sort of device uh, is, is pulling the, um, the lead or the results. Okay. Uh, another example, I can go to Geo. I use this one quite a lot. I can go to a location. And in this one, the secondary dimension that I might be interested in is to do with the regions. So if I'm inside South Africa and Gauteng, I might come in here and just attach a city. So you can see Santon here is attached to Gauteng and generally speaking, it's the best converter and it's got the highest amount of traffic. But if you want to break it down, Johannesburg's got a little bit, Cape Town, Western Cape, and so on and so on. So these segments can actually, uh, or these secondary dimensions can actually help save quite a bit on time. Uh, almost all of them are cross compatible, so it won't show you something here if you can't actually use it. Uh, but sometimes if you don't have something set up, it'll just give you zero data. So here's a strange one called a social entity. Don't use it that much. And sometimes when there's a lot of data to filter through, it takes a while. Or no data sometimes. I'm actually going to skip that if it doesn't load in the next second or so. Okay. Here it comes. So you can see it doesn't even have any data, so I couldn't find anything for this particular section. Okay. Uh, in the Google Ads, you can also do some secondary dimension filtering. Okay. This one doesn't have the ads actually connected at the moment, so I can't really show you in there. I haven't run any ads this year, so I won't show you anything in there. Okay. Uh, then at page level, you can also do segmenting. So this is the pages. You can see the Academy is now the top page. And if I go to the academy and I say, where does that information come from? I can just do by source or medium. And you can see that the academy visits are most likely direct. Okay, well, actually organic, it's interesting. And there's some directs and so on and so on. You can see where all the academy guys are coming from. And you can segment that way. So it gives you a pretty good overview of uh, what's happening on the site. So you go into Academy and you can sort again from whichever level that you're in. Okay, so these are Academy pages, organically gets the most traffic, then direct, and then you got some s referrals from other places. Nice way to pick up your referrals. I've actually didn't know what a lot of these are. So I might go back and take a look at them. Okay. If you have any events, events running, you can actually sort by events, but I don't have any events on here from a page level. Okay, so that's just the basic sorting that can happen through secondary dimensions. Uh, which generally we do use them quite a bit uh, if you want to find uh, anything that you see in the sidebar here can be secondary dimension to any other section. So as an example, if I'm in the Google Ads section and I want to get a device, I can go into campaigns and I can get the device as a secondary uh, dimension because device is another item or dimension on the sidebar here. So it just allows you to cross from one to the other uh, at any time. You could also use these segmenting options to do devices uh, at the top. Okay. Now the, the other section that I'm going to show you now is if uh, instead of just looking at one view and segmenting that one view, 
uh, you can actually segment an entire um, section. So I'm going to show you how these custom segments work at the top. So pretty much in any section that you're in, uh, or any dimension section that you're in, you can add a custom segment. So as an example, I'm going to try and custom segment everyone that came from Santon, as an example. So I'm going to click on custom segment. I'm going to click the big red button that says add a new segment. And I'm going to go down to, yeah, let's take a look, traffic sources, let's do demographics, no, no, condition. Okay, if the condition is a region, or actually let's do Santon, so if the condition is a city that contains Santon, it'll always come up if you have historical data with regards to it. So it's already telling you on the side here at 16% are from Santon. So you can get a good idea what the segment is going to do uh, on the side there. So City Santon, I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to say City Santon. And I'm going to push save. Now it's actually going to segment 16% of the data here. So now I'm going to go to a normal section of the site. Let's call it acquisition, all the traffic. So any place that I go now, it's actually going to show you what's happening on with that segment. So City Santon, every single thing that I see now is to do with some sort of Santon visitor. Okay. So this post, these people are here that you see, even the graphs and stuff are all from Santon. If I jump to another section of the site, even if I go to the behavior and I go to all of the pages, these are still Santon based people. So you can see these are all segmenting by Santon. Uh, if I want to now uh, break it down to another city or major city, I can write another segment to compare two cities together. So go back to conditions and then go type in city again. And this time I'm going to do Cape Town, city of Cape Town, city and Cape Town. And now I can see the difference between Santon and Cape Town. You can see Santon's got 90, Cape Town's 24. Every single page will be segmented and every single total will be segmented. So yeah, you can see this to total and it's telling you what percentage of uh, it's making up. It's making 13% of the results are from Santon. 8% of the results are from Cape Town. Okay. And I can go back to acquisitions. I'll go back to the channels again. And you can see organically quite a bit from Santon and not too bad from Cape Town on a gold site five from uh, Santon two from Cape Town okay. and the same thing goes with any audience so if you want to see what technology is being used let's go back to devices again okay Santon very much for the Apple iPhone only five Cape Townians so on and so on. This is actually my phone. I'm showing that it's from Santon. So all these segments will follow you around so they can be reused, which is quite nice. And you can literally go to every section and you're only looking at the data for that particular section of the site. If you want to remove them, you can click the drop down here and just say remove. Now it's only going to be Santon, I mean Cape Town. And we're going to say remove again. And once you remove both segments, it'll go back to the all users. I'm going to show you some other ones that uh, are commonly used. As an example, mobile traffic versus desktop traffic. Where are you? If you're not sure where it is, just search it. There we go, tablet and desktop. And apply.
So you can see we've got 189 users here. Uh, mobile, 175, and only 14 from desktop and tablets. Uh, so quite a big chunk these days is going towards mobile traffic. And then because it's a segment again, uh, with regards to the devices, I can once again go to any section of the, of the analytics. Let's go take a look at some pages. go so the academy uses 544 almost all of them uh, actually the academy which is interesting not so many on the mobile even though in total we've got more there and now if I go to conversions to see where the people that actually send inquiries are coming from I can go to goals and there's a good indication so we've got 32 total users most of those users that inquire are on the desktop and only two are mobile traffic. Okay, so the segments are quite nice. Obviously, you, if you just want to see mobile versus desktop, you can always remove the all users. And there you go, just one versus the other. Two mobile, 30 desktop. Same goes with locations. Who's doing what in which city? South Africa, desktop 500, mobile 145, and so on and so on. You can go in. You can see even the mapping will segment between the two. So you've got two pictures. This is your mobile, and this is your desktop or tablet traffic on the side here. Yeah, so segments do help quite a lot. Yeah, you can actually get very uh, complicated with your segments if you want. Um, there's plenty of segments online that you can just Google. Uh, a lot of people use them for different things. I kind of like this one here that shows total converters. So it'll take all of your conversions and it'll tell you what session is converting. So if I just say converters, by the way, it's a default one. It should be in every account. And now if I go to acquisitions, it's gonna tell me out of this traffic, how many of them of these sessions were converters. So organically, we had 20 sessions, direct six and referral, we had five. Because everything here is to do with converters. They could have converted more than once. It is a possibility within that session, but you get a general idea on who's converting in the site. So that's pretty much how uh, you can get around. If you want to know what uh, segments there are, I can just quickly show you uh, some of the common ones. Okay. So when I say new segment at the top here, you can see it's uh, demographics. So we can sort by 18s to 24s or a mixture of age and gender as an example. So 18 to 24 males, then you can just give it a name, male 18 to 24. We know it's 2.64% of the current traffic that we're getting. So any of these demographics you can search. Okay. We can even do a demographic with some sort of audience builder. So like an affinity based audience. So if uh, that person is a shopper, and is between the ages of 35 and 44 shoppers between 35 and 44 let's see how many of you guys are shoppers and nope only six percent and so on and so on how about educational doing some sort of uh, it's not uh, edu i believe is an in market yep there you go so post-secondary education We've got one percent of them and say all age, we can tick them off if you want all ages with regards to education. Six percent, quite a bit bigger. Okay, so then you can make any of those, just give it a name, and then any place that you go, it will show you what matches that particular segment. 
You can do a technology-based uh, segment, so you can see what kind of browser. So if you only want to see, if you want to see if anyone's actually using Internet Explorer anymore, you can say browser IE. And as you can see, it's only three users since January that are using Internet Explorer, so you can actually not do any design for it or building for it. Don't need to focus on it anymore. You can see what their behavior is, so we can go and see what sort of um, uh, people on our site are staying or sticking around. So behavior for sessions or more than 10. Nope, nobody there that comes back more than 10 times. Okay. Oh, this is Internet Explorer. By the way, if you go to what the next uh, behavior, you gotta make sure you remove the previous segment. So I'm going to take off Internet Explorer. And it'll mark it with a 1 if it's still applying. So 0.77% come back more than 10 times. Okay, to take it off, you can just push the gray button. You can try to say, okay, did anyone come in our March push as an example? And you can choose a date range and say 3.7% of people came between 1 and 4th of March. This is quite nice if you're running a, um, a promotion or something like that, and you want to see if you got some new visitors during that promotion. So sometimes I will mark this as new campaign, and then I'll give it a campaign name, and you can see what sort of people came during that campaigning period of time. Uh, you can do organic only as an example or paid only so you can use the source medium option and you can say the campaign medium contains organic and then you can call this medium organic or organic visit uh, visitors only so 56 percent of the users that come here come through organic methods uh, if you do have e-commerce on your site, enhanced e-commerce, uh, you can actually st segment people by revenue. In other words, uh, did anyone make me more than X? And you can segment them around uh, down into pretty much uh, detail. And then, of course, you can remarket to them. So that's quite a nice one. Although a lot of this remarketing or uh, base targeting won't work in uh, search ads, but it will work in display and sometimes in video. And then the one that I use most of all is the conditions. So as an example, if somebody goes to a certain page, and that page contains Academy, it'll tell me everybody, 16% of the people that come to CAS and Media actually go through to the Academy. So you can do it pretty much by any page or a specific page on the site. Uh, you can also say it does not contain, so you can all obviously don't have to choose the contain option. You can do exactly matches, or you can say does not contain, and that'll exclude everyone that came to Cast and Media, and you'll be left with only the people that didn't go. Okay. And then one of my favorite ones is actually the sequences options. So you can, you can start to define some sort of uh, customer channel. In other words, what are the, the customers doing? What sort of actions are they making on your site? So if you would like your customers to come to step A, step B, and step C, let's call it three pages of a checkout, you can actually see how many people achieve that. So as an example, if uh, the first person that comes in, how many people followed this pattern? I'll give you an example quickly. So it came to the page of Academy, then went to the page, of a basket or something like that. So we don't really have baskets uh, or stayed on the site for more than a few minutes. Time on page. Session more than one minute, as an example. OK. 
Okay, so they stay more than a minute. And then you can make another step and another step. So you can actually try to figure out what your users are doing. So here you can see they came to the site, they stayed more than a minute, and then they did this, then they did that. So the, the, the journey that you want them to take, how many people are actually taking that journey? And that's called a sequence. It'll add the sequence. Now when you go to the countries, it's gonna tell you everyone from that country that did that segment or that journey and so on and so on. So this is more of the advanced uh, um, segmenting, but very, very helpful if you really want to build good e-commerce profiles to see if people are going to the right uh, section of the site. Okay. And like I said, once your segments are all in there, you can view them across multiple analytics accounts. You can share them. There are share options. So you can see here, you can share your segments and use them in a different account. Uh, you can import from segments that people have previously made. So here you can see there's some uh, public segments, enhanced e-commerce or bring in all the filters or segments that people use for that, social media traffic. Uh, the one that we have currently in analytics is kind of uh, bare minimum data. So this is actually one that I use quite a bit and it uh, segments the data a little bit more in social media. Engaged traffic, this is your time on site metrics, how many people are actually clicking on stuff that you wanted to do. Uh, the only way to know if these actually work or work for you is to go and import them into your segments and then uh, try them. And they're not gonna break anything. So segments are very safe. So I must uh, actually uh, bring that across to you that if you add a segment, it's not ever going to break your analytics account. It's just going to filter it, uh, segment it into the data that you wanna use. Now what can break your uh, data is something called a filter. So don't get the two confused. Segment only takes the data that is already existing and puts it into a little box. Whereas a filter filters out that data so it will never exist in your profile. So for example, I go to admin and I go through to the filters section. This is different. If I play in here, you can break your data. So if I say filter only by data that goes to Academy, uh, it's going to only show me data from the Academy and you can't go back and recover the data previously. So when working with filters, be very, very careful. Uh, so I can show you some predefined filters as an example. You can include only people from a certain ISP or IP and that traffic that you see there will only be uh, in that account from then on, it's from the time that you put this filter in, will only be by that particular IP address. Or exclude an IP, so if you want to exclude your own agency or company from the analytics, you can do that. But just know that if you create that filter and you're not too sure what you're doing, that data is gone. You can't recover it again. So be very, very careful uh, using filters. You can see the filter that I currently use is something called a subdomain filter uh, because we had academy.casson and seo.casson and adwords.casson previously we wanted to see where that data came from so in when you go to the pages you'll notice that on our pages section it a lot of analytics accounts by default will just have forward slash academy it won't say forward slash cast in the academy, it'll just say forward slash academy. So if you've got multiple home pages, in other words, five different subdomains, they're all going to say just forward slash. This forces it to put in the actual domain uh, so that you can see where that traffic is coming from. And that's what a segment does. I can't go back and say just show me forward slash or just show me academy anymore. Uh, it's going to be attached to the domain. Uh, because that's what the filter is currently doing. It's filtering by domain and subdomain. So you can see which subdomains. And you can see I don't use subdomains anymore. But if I go all the way back to many, many years ago, let's go back to 20, I think 2008 to 2012. We had design.cas and seo.cas and so that way it wouldn't these three home pages wouldn't have got confused uh, by all of them being just forward slash so that's basically what it can do uh, to us to you can filter out traffic you can 
exclude IPs, you can uh, filter keywords, you can see which of your keywords are in position number one, or two, three, or four using a CD number, uh, that sort of stuff. And that's what basically what the filters do. So that's segmenting in Google Analytics. Now we're gonna cross over to Google AdWords and just show you some segments and where to find them in Google Ads. So here you can see uh, we're in an ads account. Uh, we're gonna have to get a little bit of history here. So nothing for January, let's go all time. Okay, so we've got a little bit of data here. Now to find uh, filtering or segmenting in Google Ads, there is a little button just to the right of the search bar. And you can see here, we can search, uh, search by time, hour of the day. It's gonna go through all your historical traffic during that uh, date range, and it's gonna segment it. Again, you can sort by most clicks or least clicks or conversions or whatever it is that you wanna sort by. So the sorting options are the same as Google Analytics but the segment is now applying. Again, this can't break your site. It's not gonna actually change the way, it just changes the way you're viewing something. So if I want to sort by year, it's telling me in 2018 this happened, in 2019 no advertising from then and so on and so on. Okay. Some of the stuff will be grayed out. It just means that it can't go back and look at every single day uh, since 2011, that's too much data to go through. But if I go through and uh, make this a shorter date range, so if I just take uh, July of 2017, let's see what it is, let's go March of 2018 as an example. March of 2018, 19, okay, March. 2018. So if I take a 30 day range, then it won't give me any issues when I want to segment by weeks now. So it still says it's too many days, but now I can go in and I can see week of 26th, this is what happened. Week on the 5th, that's what happened. So sometimes when it's grayed out, it just means that there's too much data to go through. It won't be able to, to figure out the days now. You can still do months from here, because it's one month, March and so on and so on. Okay. You can also segment by device. There's your computers versus your desktop versus your tablets. And if you want to learn all of these, you can just go through and see all of them. Click type, uh, a lot of people don't even know it exists here. But if you're wondering if they click the top part of your ad, the middle, the driving directions, the locations, the click to messages, any of your extensions that you had, it'll tell you uh, that they in here and what data it is. And of course, if you want to do by your conversions names, so this one only uses a thank you page, but if you had a whole bunch of different types of conversions, like a thank you page, a click to call, an email, that sort of stuff, and you want to know which of the conversions do uh, stuff, you can segment by the conversion action. And of course, you've got your networks. I'm trying to figure out if your network, uh, your search partner actually does anything. And most of the time, it generally doesn't do much uh, in an account. So you can just turn it off. Uh, how often you're at the top versus not being at the top of your ads. So yeah, you can see it only took position number one. Uh, every now and then a partner would do a position number two or so. I mean, uh, five, six or seven, which is called an other. Okay, so that's your segmenting in here. Most commonly used time conversions, of course. If you have events, you can track your events and segment by events as well. How long it took to get a conversion can also be segmented. Zero days, five to six days, nine to 10 days, and so on and so on. Okay, so the only way to figure these ones out is to actually come and play with them and use them. Okay, uh, so to turn off the, the, fold, uh, the segmentation, you can just select none and it'll go back to here. Now there's also filtering. This is not the same type of filtering that you see in analytics that can harm your account. This just filters your data in here, kind of like a segment. So I'm not too sure why Google calls it a filter uh, to be confused with a filter that's made in analytics. Uh, I personally think they should align the names, 
but uh, in this case you can add a filter and you can see there's a whole bunch more sorting options here so you can sort by clicks as an example and if uh, you want to see only accounts that got more than five clicks it will take out the ones that don't achieve that metric and then it'll show you the ones that are left okay but unlike analytics this can't break your account it just helps you to get by if you want to take it out you push the dogs and so i kind of like to use the word the ad group name because i name my campaigns well so if i want to see only my gauteng campaigns i can filter by gauteng only once you get used to the segmenting, you'll see why we label our names or we do our uh, ad names so well, is because it's gonna allow us to pretty much pull up anything when we want to. So if I wanna pull up all search campaigns, I can just sort by S, and then one of my demo campaigns, and then just sort by demo, and I'll show the demo campaign and so on and so on. So you can pretty much filter anything out here. You can also do multiple filters. So within this one, I might wanna do a secondary one that tells me clicks one and five, four. So you can add them together. You can do quite a few of these and it can, it can show. How about cross device conversions more than one? And so on and so on so none of those apply so there's no demos with more than four clicks with a cross device conversion because you can see it says filter zero again something that you want to play with uh, get used to it try a lot of different options you can't really break anything you're not changing the campaign itself you're just changing the data that you've seen and uh, sometimes if you don't see something just make sure you don't have some filter attached. You, uh, if there's something blue here, you can always exit out to see a default again. Another reason that your ads won't show is because you might have something called all enabled or uh, on, which will only show you the ones that aren't paused. So if you're missing um, data or a campaign, you, can't, you don't know where it is, just make sure you come in here and you say all. It's gonna show you everything, including deleted accounts, past accounts, and so on and so on you'll be able to recover that account that you lost even if i pause one of these you can see i've got one two three four live accounts one pause one add if i say all enable it's not going to count this one or this one okay so the paused and the deleted one disappears if i say all but removed it'll bring back the paused one but not the deleted one so all of them but not removed removed being the deleted one and that's basically how you get around in Google Ads. Uh, I hope this was an informative session. Uh, please catch me in a couple of weeks where we're going to go through our next session. Thanks, guys.